Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am going to be doing my April wrap-up. I did read 16 books um, for the month. Some of them were part of Old School April, reading books and watching from 2002 and before. And that was from Kelsey, Slime and Slasher. She organized the whole thing. Um, I did read about half of what I wanted to for that, but anyway, so let's get started. So the first book that I read in April was Seeds of Yesterday, and that is the fourth book in the Dollenganger series by V.C. Andrews, and there is a group of us that are reading some, well, I don't know how far we're going to go in it because that's a whole thing. Um, this one was better than the one before. If there be thorns, that was just trash. Um, we are reading the fifth book in June, no, May, so now, this month. Seeds of Yesterday is pretty much just Kathy and Chris from the other books and their kids. The kids are grown. Kathy and Chris, I believe, are in their 50s that whole mess. So the next book is about the grandma from the first book and why she became such a nasty bitch. And that is it. There are more books about this family, but those are written by the ghostwriter Andrew Niederman and I have no desire to read those. So I gave that three stars. It was just average. It was entertaining. Nothing special. So the next book I read was Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby, and that was for Brad Proctor's uh, Spinebreakers Book Club. I tore right through this. I gave it four stars. It was good. Really, really good. I am stingy with my five stars. It was almost a five star. There was something missing for me, but I could not tell you what it was exactly. Um, so that book is about two fathers trying to get revenge. Their sons were in a relationship and they got killed and they they themselves have a criminal past so they don't give a shit if they get busted. They just want revenge for their son's deaths. Their sons did nothing wrong to anybody and they got killed. I don't remember if it was specifically. No, it wasn't because they were gay, but they had regrets because they did not accept their sons when they were alive. So they felt that they not completely, not completely would make up for that, but it was really good. It's not for everybody because it is quite violent, but I really enjoyed it. I gave that four stars. So the next book that I read, I did this on audio, was Hell House by Richard Matheson. I gave that three stars. That was the From Hell Book Club pick for April. Um, this was very, I don't know, I, it was, it was okay. The book was about this medium, I believe he was a medium. They want him to go into this house that has a haunted history. Shit ensues. It's very sexual, more than you would think, especially for the time. I believe it was out in the 70s. Um... I don't know that everybody has really liked this. I should be planning a live to discuss it soon. I honestly couldn't tell you any more about the book than I just did, so I'll have to <laughs> look on the Wikipedia just because I finished it at the beginning of April and it didn't really do too much for me where I'm going to remember every little detail. Um, the next book I picked up was Love Sickness by Junji Ito, just for a little change of pace. This was a graphic novel um, about this guy that when people saw him, they would become so obsessed with whomever, like there's a crossroads fortune thing. If you come across somebody and you ask them for a fortune, they're supposed to give you an answer. It has to do with that, and then people become so obsessed or lovesick that I, I love you so much I could kill myself is said 
quite frequently in this. Um, it's not my favorite Junji Ito, but it was, wasn't bad. Well, it was nice for a change of pace. Um, the next thing I read was Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doughty. I gave that four stars. It was interesting to find out the life and workings of working in a crematory. Um, I can't imagine, like, she had to cremate babies and, you know, bodies that were not in great shape. So trying to get... It's interesting if you have any um, interest in learning about the death industry. And I and she's got a couple other books. I read one about um, death rituals in the world. That's worth listening to also. Um, the next one I read was The Prom Queen by R.L. Stein, And that's a Fear Street book. I read that for Old School April. Gave that four stars. Man, it was a fear street. All the prom queen candidates were starting to get killed. I can't tell much more because it's super short. Um, the next one was My Darling Husband by Kimberly Bell. I gave that three stars. I couldn't tell you what the hell that's about. It wasn't anything special for me. It was just an average thriller that is not memorable. <laughs> so the next book was A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow and that was the first in the Fractured Fables with retelling of the Rumpelstiltskin slap, no not Rumpelstiltskin, Sleeping Beauty where she pokes her finger and falls asleep and blah blah blah. That is, there's another book out or coming out I don't know that I'm going to continue the series. It was okay. It was super short. If you're into retellings, give it a shot. The next two I gave, or I did, I read was Stay Out of the Basement and Monster Blood by R.L. Stein, and those are both Goosebumps books. Those were for Old School April as well. I did do a vlog um, of me reading those. I did prefer Stay Out of the Basement more. It was four for me. And then Monster Blood, I gave a two. I was bored with that one. And I don't know. For it being one of the most and more well-known uh, Goosebumps, I guess I went in expecting a lot more. Anyways, on to the next. I read Frankenstein. This took me about two months to read. I was bored. Um, I get it. I get that it was groundbreaking. I gave it three stars. I felt a little bit better about it than I did Dracula. Yes, I'm glad that I read it because it is a classic. Um, will I read it again? Probably not. Everybody knows this story, so I'm not going to go too much into it. I gave it three. Um, the next book I read was Dark Places by Jillian Flynn, and this is the last book by Jillian Flynn that I had to read. I think she's coming up with another book, and I will read that. I gave this a four star. I had watched the movie before. I also have a review on my channel, so I won't give too much detail on that, but I did enjoy that. Uh, the next book I read was... Lu the Secrets of Us by Lucinda Berry, and that I gave four stars. Lucinda Berry, a lot of her books are on Kindle Unlimited, and they are worth checking out, especially if you have Kindle Unlimited. They do have her, all of her books, from what I saw, are all on audio as well, for free, included in the Kindle Unlimited. Um, this book has to do with... There's two sisters, one is a lawyer, one ends up in a psych hospital because she was found outside of her house that was on fire and her husband was inside the house, um, practically dead, but they were able to save him, but he's at the hospital now on a ventilator. So she's in a psych hospital, won't tell you more uh, about what happened, she just she 
obviously set the house on fire, but why? So, I don't want to go into much more, but the sisters do have a past that comes into play in the story. I gave it four stars. It was different. Lucinda Berry seems to have different promises and plots than the usual um, thriller writers. She does have a new one out that I just downloaded. I can't remember what it's called, but I'm excited to get to it. And the last... Oh, I got two more. Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. I gave two stars. I am going to do like a review type video for that, so I'm not going to go into it too much. Wasn't great. And the last book that I finished was actually a reread, and I got a head start on my May TBR. I reread Carrie by Stephen King. I gave it a three star the first time. I'm going to keep it a three star. Um, the first time I read it was an ebook. The second time I listened to the audio, I did catch more stuff in the audio that I did not remember from the, um, the ebook. But I am happy I reread it. It was a quick listen, so I don't feel like I wasted my time or anything. But I don't reread books frequently, so this is like out of the ordinary for me. But that was all 16 books that I read this month. I don't really have a favorite, but the worst definitely is Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. And then I guess I could say Razorblade Tears was like the best of the month. So have you read any of these? What did you think? Um, let me know in the comments. And that's all I got for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.